According to Akala Inks, this is a Mongolian sandstorm. Today we're looking at Kala Inc.'s line of nostalgia abstraction and the color is Mongolian sandstorm. I got this box of ink for about $10 off of Jet Pens. And for what I can find out about it, it's um, an ink from Taiwan and they also have a line called Gemstone and Neon, but neither one of those are for sale on Jet Pens. And the only pl other place I can see it for sale is um, at T.Y. Lee in Taiwan. On the back of the box, it says Studio 9 Design. So I went to that website and there really wasn't much more information. It was kind of an incomplete website. And that's about all I can find on the internet about this ink. The box has an interesting, very light purple sheen. So when you turn the box around and around, you can kind of see it. It's a small glass, heavy bottomed bottle, about 30 milliliters, and uh, has a really nice cap. The cap has Kala ink in raised lettering and some pretty scroll work around the top. And it's made of heavy duty plastic and it's a really nice, nice cap and it gives like a, a nice sound when you open it. This is really great because there are a lot of really nice bottles that are putting, being put out by different companies now, but a lot of them just have really crappy caps. And I'm talking to you, Ackerman. Inside there's a sheet and on the back side it has an explanation on how to fill your pen in Chinese. On the front side it has the line of Nostalgia Abstraction Inks, which is um, kind of weird because I'm not really sure if the line's called Nostalgia or Abstraction or we just have this really long name, Kala Inks Nostalgia Abstraction Mongolian Sandstorm. All the inks in the Nostalgia Abstraction line look like muted purplish bluish brown colors. I like the way they grouped them all together like this and they look really nice. I was asked by a viewer what kind of paper I use and how I go about it. I use both Tomoa River paper and Grafilo paper. The Tomoa River paper is like in this just little notebook. And I write only on one side so I can stack the two notebooks together. And then I just use Grafilo paper in this notebook here. The Grafilo paper I use is in this like long slender notebook here and Grafilo is famous for really showing sheen on any ink. So if the ink has any kind of sheen, if it doesn't show up on Grafilo, it's not going to show up anywhere. Since Tomoa River and Grafilo show off an ink's sheen the best, I felt like it would be best to use these two types of paper in an ink review. I'll be doing a paper review later on in a couple of weeks. In both a fine and a medium line, the ink is pretty much well a dusty light purple. There doesn't seem to be that much difference. On the 1.1 stub, a little bit of kind of a dusty sheen comes out to make the color a little bit more complex. And then you can see more of it coming out on the flex and then also on uh, the 3.8 parallel where it really starts to pool and um, you can start to see a lot more of the sheen. I wanted to see what it looked like, you know, with a lot more ink laid down on it. So I um, did what I called the, the bigger flex here to lay down some more ink. And again, it's uh, a more complex color the more ink you have. Both on Tomoa River and Grafilo, the try time was about 10 seconds, which is actually a little bit better than normal. Conversely, on the splotch test, there are little pieces there that um, didn't dry out completely and I gave it a full 24 hours to dry. It dried to a nice dusty purple with an olive green sheen, kind of a grayish olive green sheen, see if you can see it here. And it's like all over the place. I think it's partially responsible for giving this ink its nice like kind of complicated dusty color. On the chromatography test, it's basically just the straight line of dusky purple with a little bit of purple that lifts off. Though I didn't see that at all in my waterproof test. To do the chromatography, I basically take a Q-tip and I swipe it across the chromatography paper and let it dry out. And then I immerse it in a little bit of water on the bottom half and let it draw up from the bottom. I'm not really so sure that um, waterproof inks do, do tell you much on a chromatography test. They just basically seem to stay there. I'd like to do kind of a real life waterproof test. 
Here I'm setting down a cup like you, you might do absentmindedly on top of your work and maybe the condensation or some slop over from the drink would go onto your paper. So I'm gonna set the cup down here and leave it for 10 minutes. But if you were to spill water, you would clean it up right away. So I'd be spilling this water and then I'm gonna blot it up right away. And then use some tissue paper to clean it up. Right up after blotting up the water, I can see that no ink at all lifted up. Okay, it's been 10 minutes and after picking up the cup, there's really no indication of any ink loss at all. I can see an indentation in the paper and that it's wet, but there's just no change in the ink. There was a mark on the table, but other than that, there was really no indication that I had set a cup down on top of the paper. I made two copies of the exact same thing, and you can't tell the difference between the two of them, which one was wet, other than on this piece of paper, it's wrinkled a little bit, but the ink hasn't changed at all. I don't think I'd call this a water-resistant ink. I think I pretty much will call it waterproof. This is a pigment-based ink, and most waterproof pigment-based inks are very dry, but this ink has a lot of surfactant in it, and maybe not as much pigment as others. So this ink is a nice wet ink. Here are some other waterproof inks. This is Mont Blanc's 90th anniversary gray ink and it's really dry. And this is Platinum's pigment sepia ink and it's really dry. And this is Wagner's 2019 show ink. It's a nice rich red but it's kind of dry. And this is Mont Blanc's Einstein ink, and it's really dry. I can tell this ink has a lot of surfactant in it. It just came gushing out of this pen. It's a wet writer, but I'm barely holding onto the pen. And this Twisby, right after I inked it up, it kind of blurped a little bit on the first um, word I wrote, but now it's writing just fine. With inks with a lot of surfactant, there's this strange feeling all the time that there's just ink creeping up the section. Even if you've wiped it really well with like say a tissue paper or something, it still just sometimes just feels like there's ink creeping up the section. You could try using that Sleeto cleaning paper and really trying to get in in all the crevices to get all the ink off. But sometimes I think it's just some sort of weird feeling like you think someone's staring at you or something. You think there's just ink creeping up the section, especially for women, like, you know, if you wear hand lotion or something like that. So I found the best thing to do if you're using like a cartridge converter is just to take a syringe and syringe up the ink and put it directly into the, into the converter. Then just stick it back on the section. That way the, the section doesn't get into any ink at all. You may need to flood the feed if you want to write with a pen right away by just twisting a little bit on the converter. This particular platinum pen is a very dry writer and this ink works perfect with it. And as you can see, I have no ink on my hands um, from the section. Kala's Mongolian Sandstorm is a nice, wet, truly waterproof ink with an interesting color and that is actually very easy to clean up. The Atramentus Document Ink Dark Blue and this ink are my two favorite waterproof inks.